Should I wait to apply for VA disability? Should I apply for VA disabilities piecemeal, waiting for one disability to get granted before I apply for the next one? I get this question a lot. I see it in the forums. I see it in the comments to my videos. And let me just say that there's got to be a lot of bad advice floating around because I see this question so often. I think the bad advice out there is actually costing veterans money and wasting their time. So let's see if I can dispel some of these myths by explaining a little bit about why it makes sense to maybe apply for everything all at once or just not wait in general. What I have found is that some people will tell you to submit one disability claim at a time because this somehow saves time. The VA doesn't take as long if there's only one disability claimed on the application. First of all, I'm not sure there's any data to actually support this contention that the VA is sometimes gonna, somehow gonna process a single issue one at a time. I, I just don't think it's out there. But in general, I just also think this is terrible advice. And here's why. First, the VA is slow no matter what, whether you apply for one disability or 10 on the same application. It's gonna take a while. You might get lucky, it might only take three or four or five months. It might take a year and a half. We just don't know. It all depends on the individual circumstances. It also depends a little on which region you're in because certain regions of the country have more claim and pension examiners who can get veterans in faster to do their claim and pension exams. It just depends on a number of factors, none of which are really how many conditions that were applied for. Some folks will tell you, well, you need to apply for the primary condition first and then apply for all the secondaries. You see this a lot with things like, well, you need to apply for tinnitus first and get granted for that. And then only once you're tinnitus or tinnitus, I still don't know how it's pronounced, can you start applying for all those secondary conditions. That's not really true either. And I think this advice is actually causing people to lose out on effective dates and back pay. So let's talk about some of, this, some of this stuff. First of all, there's a basic premise that the VA is required to look at all reasonably raised theories of service connection. So you don't have to really worry too much about primary, secondary, presumptive theories of service connection. You can add that to the file when you make your application, but the VA is supposed to look at it automatically. Now, do they? Absolutely not. Sometimes you have to appeal to get them to ask the right questions of their claim and pension exam doctors. Let me tell you a little bit about how I've learned that the VA system works. If you apply for a bunch of conditions at once, the VA will actually try to schedule as many exams on the same day with the same doctor at once at the same time. What I mean by that is that if you apply for your back, your neck, your knees, your ankles, your shoulders, your elbows at the same time, the VA is likely going to send you to one doctor who's going to do multiple exams that day. If you apply piecemeal, you're going to go to multiple exams over multiple months months. Now, you might end up going to multiple exams if you have to appeal, but you might have to appeal either way, so it doesn't make a difference. The key is, though, is that if you can consolidate exams, that's that's a good thing. Now, the second thing is, is actually kind of technical. If you have multiple claims in the system all at once, VBMS, or the Veterans Benefits Management System, can actually only issue one award at a time. So if one office is working on one of your claims and has it in their uh, award system and they're working on the letter, nobody else can actually work on that on a separate claim. They have to wait a couple weeks to issue another decision. So there's some sort of mechanical or electronic problem where if you have four or five separate separate and distinct claims, not conditions, but separate claims, they can only work on one award at a time. But if you have all of your conditions in the same claim, what they can do is they can make a decision on that same claim all at one time. Now, some decisions might be deferred, and I discussed that in another video. They might need to be deferred for additional review, but that's fine. You at least have something service-connected or denied. The second thing, and quite frankly, I think this is the bigger issue, is effect dates. Let's say you apply for PTSD in January and you get granted in July. Great, you're going to get back pay all the way back to January for your PTSD condition. Now that you're granted for PTSD condition, you're going to go, well, I'm going to apply for headaches now as secondary to my PTSD. You apply in July for your headaches and it takes them until December to grant the headache condition. Well, guess what the effective date is for your headaches? It's not January, it's July. So if you want the headaches to be considered, you need to apply when you apply for the head for the PTSD. That's why it makes sense to put these conditions on the same claim at the same time. Now you're thinking, but what? But, but my PTSD isn't granted yet. How are they gonna connect it secondarily? Well, if you get granted for PTSD but denied for headaches in July, guess what? You can appeal. And if you appeal the headaches in a reasonable time, in a 
uh, continuously pursue it within a year, right? And it gets granted, let's say in December, that way then your headache effective date will go all the way back to January because it's been continuously pursued. But if you wait until July to apply after your PTSD has been granted, your effective date's only gonna go back to July. You're missing out on months of potential effective date. So this is why it's important. If you think you have these conditions now, apply for them now, don't wait. If you're not ready to apply for something, you can file an intent to file. Keep in mind, whatever you file next, whether that be a supplemental claim or a new claim, is going to take up that intent to file and you're gonna lose the effective date if you then stagger more claims and appeals later on. So again, it makes a lot of sense for most people to apply for all of their conditions all at the same time instead of staggering them out or, or piecemealing it over a period of time. In the long run, it's probably gonna be faster. Still might be a year or two after everything's said and done, but it is going to be faster than trying to do it six months, nine months at a time and waiting for each decision to come back. Piecemealing it and staggering these claims does not speed things up. It definitely doesn't. It slows things down. If you're thinking about filing for multiple conditions, you're probably better off filing them all at once or filing an intent to file and then filing them all at once once you're ready. But piecemealing does not help. If you are if you disagree with a decision, you disagree with a rating, reach out to us and let us see how we can help.